Today I want to read a few more verses than usual because the point they make is so important when it comes to living the Christian life. I'm reading from Proverbs chapter 26 beginning in verse 1. Here's what the Bible says. As snow in summer and rain in harvest, so honor is not fitting for a fool. Like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without cause shall not alight. A whip for the horse a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the fool's back. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him." One of the hardest things in life, at least for me, is not to argue when you know for a fact you're right. Now, I'm not talking about those times when you think you're right, which happens to all of us. I'm talking about those moments when you know you're right, when all the evidence is clearly on your side. Even then, the Bible says, engaging in an argument is not always the wisest course of action. Why? Well, the answer is as simple as it is surprising. When you engage somebody who's being foolish in an argument, and particularly those who are willfully foolish, you're actually giving foolishness credibility by discussing it. Let me see if I can illustrate. There are conspiracy theorists on the internet who try to convince us of foolish or irrelevant theories, like this small pocket of people who don't believe that man actually landed on the moon back in 1969. Now, instead of believing the obvious, they're trying to convince us it was all a hoax filmed on a Disney soundstage and passed off as gospel truth by a world conspiracy. Now, what would it accomplish if the finest minds at NASA decided to engage these people in a public debate on national TV? In the minds of a lot of people, all of a sudden these conspiracy theorists would have more credibility than they deserve because they're on the same platform as respectable experts. Now, take that principle and apply it to yourself. What should you do when someone makes foolish statements about your Christian faith? I'm not talking about those who are curious and really don't know. I'm talking about those people who are hostile and reveal their ignorance every time they open their mouths. Now, I, I won't argue the usefulness of the occasional well-placed statement to silence a fool, but for the most part, it's not wise to let a foolish person borrow your credibility by engaging them in argument. Let it go, even if you feel some embarrassment time to time. You see, uh, eventually the fool always shows his hand, and your quiet commitment to a godly life will vindicate your faith. And besides, over the long haul, refusing to engage foolishness might just open the door for you to lead that fool to Christ someday. And even if it doesn't, it still might open doors for intelligent observers to find the kingdom of God through your example. And leaving those kinds of doors open is really just a better way to live. Discover answers to the most common questions of life at BibleInfo.com. That's right, answers to questions directly from God's Word, the Bible. BibleInfo.com is used by people around the world. It's available in 19 languages. Easy and simple to use, BibleInfo.com, answers to life's questions. Log on today and discover the answer you've been looking for. BibleInfo.com